Mark Pryor, Chicago Cubs. For his age, he's one of the best pitchers I've seen at pitching to the situation. Usually, that's what veteran pitchers do. Instead of trying to get this guy out and that guy out, he has an idea and a plan on what he wants to do. Former manager Dusty Baker, 2003. Mark Pryor would have a dominant but short career in the major leagues. He would finish with a career war of 16.6, and although he would only put up 42 wins, while he was healthy, he was one of the best pitchers in the league at that time. He would be involved with several teams over his career, drafted by the New York Yankees in the first round in 1998, and then again by the Chicago Cubs as the second pick of the 2001 amateur draft. After being granted free agency, he would play for the San Diego Padres and he would play for the Texas Rangers before being signed again by the New York Yankees in 2010. After being granted free agency again, he would play for the Boston Red Sox and finally for the Cincinnati Reds in 2013. When he would be forced to step away from the game due to multiple arm injuries. And let's take a look at Mark Pryor in his debut as a Chicago Cub. And now the 2-2 pitch to Giles. Yeah. Strike three called on the outside corner. Giles checked his swing. Brian thought it was outside, I believe, Ron. Yeah, well, he thought it was up and outside. Now, when I was looking at the monitor that time, that ball did look up a little bit, but I think it did catch the outside part of the plate. Yes, it did. The runner at second, Hermanson, with about a 10-foot lead, and the one-two pitch by Pryor. Oh, Curveball yeah. called, strike three. Welcome to Wrigley Field, Mark Pryor. He strikes out both Giles and Ramirez looking to cap the first inning. The Pirates don't score. They leave. And Mark Pryor does have a card in Perfect Team 23. It is a 99-rated diamond card. And you can get this card either off the card shop or by completing several missions within the game itself. This is a card representative of his 2003 season, which was his best in the major leagues. With the Chicago Cubs, he accumulated 18 wins and had an ERA of 243. And yes, Mark Pryor is a member of the Rocky Mountain Gladiators. He has played part of three seasons now in Rocky Mountain, two in silver and currently in gold. He has 22 wins and only 10 losses so far as a Gladiator. He is the number one pitcher in our starting rotation currently, and we look forward to his long career in Rocky Mountain. And welcome to Simulation Gaming, Digital Realities, Perfect Draft, Genesis Edition. How are you guys doing today? How is the new week going for you? Where are you? Are you in silver? Are you in bronze? Are you in iron? Or are you with the gladiators up in gold? Yes, and we make another sale on the card shop. We are in gold for the first time. Let's take a quick look at our history. Started off in the entry pool and then we jumped way up to silver because we had a real successful entry pool. Didn't do too well. So we dropped down to bronze, made the playoffs, Went up to silver, stayed in silver for three years, and then last season made the playoffs as a wild card team and made the finals, losing in six games. So last season, our most successful season so far, 
And for the first time, the Gladiators, our team, at the gold level. So real cool to see that we were able to jump up and uh, make that move into gold in only the, what is this, the sixth season, I guess? So pretty good. Where are you guys? Again, leave a comment. What level are you at this week? And uh, how do you think you're going to do? That is the Gladiator history. Let's take a look at our league. We are in the NC East with the Finneytown Mutants, the Brooklyn Cyclones, Windsor Wankers, and the Yonix Destroyers. So we are in with the other Canadian team in the NC and one Canadian team, Castlegar, in the AC. So good to see a couple fellow Canadian teams in the same gold 306 season. All right, so again, real early, but we're five and two. We are tied for first right now. Again, too early to kind of analyze too much, but we do kind of want to go through and take a look at our team so far. We have Mark Pryor, Francisco Liriano, Pedro Martinez, and Clayton Kershaw in the starting rotation. And they're doing well so far. In the bullpen, we got Roy Face as our stopper. Dave LaRoche, who has been our reliever of the year the last two seasons. He is our setup specialist. Sad Sam Jones, Addy Joss, Josh Hader, and Zach Wheeler as our middle relievers. And Kurt Schilling as our emergency long relief guy. And it looks like he's already started a game. Let's take a look. Yep, he started a game and he got a win. So he looks like he's going to be a decent fifth guy in the bullpen. Hitting wise, a couple changes from the last uh, episode. I had a offer in on catcher Fred Carroll. And I think I put an offer in at 34000 and got him. And he is now going to be platooning with Javi Lopez as our two catchers. I like his BABIP. I like his gap power, his eye. Not the great defensively, but he is a good utility guy. We can use him in other positions as well. And he only has four at-bats so far, but he's got two hits. So his first game as a gladiator, I'm guessing he's only played one game. Yes, one game started. He's hitting 500. Keep it up, Fred. Keep it up. You ain't no Mel Ott, but looks like you're going to be a good guy to platoon with Javi Lopez. Ranking by early war, Jim Gentile, who we picked up in the last episode, kind of a spur of the moment purchase to be our platoon guy with Mel, um, Jimmy Fox. He's leading the team in war. Hitting 417, two home runs, six RBIs, eight runs, three walks. Yeah, he he is. He wants to be a gladiator. He's saying, "Look at me. Thank you for purchasing me." Not sure if it shows his previous teams. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it doesn't. Nope. So we got a fresh start with Jim Gentile, and uh, let's see how he does. Double dinger. So uh, one game, he had two home runs already. Purchased him for 8000 in a buy order. So might be a guy if you're looking for a first baseman. Even if you do have Jimmy Fox, good guy to go righty-lefty. He's good against the lefties and, or righties. And Jimmy Fox, good against the lefties. All right, who else do we got here? Ross Barnes, who has done really well since we picked him up. He's the 97 limited edition only 100 of these cards out there and he in his three seasons with rocky mountain actually two this is his second season he hit 301 last year and currently hitting 464 in six games so he is a great player as well i believe i bought him for about 35,000, somewhere in there 
Not sure if he's available now on the card shop. Because again, there are only 100 of them. Yeah, he's selling for 48,000 right now. So I, this is a guy I recommend. Maybe put in a buy order of 35,000. See if you can get him. He's performed really well, even up to the gold level so far. So good on him. You notice he did have one season in gold with a previous team where he hit 292. And then looks like he was a platoon guy where he hit 295. So he has not hit under 289. Even at the diamond level, he was a 289 player. So this is a guy you might want to add to your lineup. Looks like he can play all the way up to diamond. Fielding wise, let's take a look. Yeah, not the strongest. So he's going to cost you a little bit in the field, um, especially at looks like second base is the weak spot. Played a little bit of short, but not enough to kind of gauge his value there. All right, Mel Ott third with a 3.3 war. Let's take a look at the face of the franchise, Mel Ott. I'm curious, what are you selling for, Mel? What are you selling for? I can't see you on the card shop. There you go, finding card shop. 28,000. Well worth it, well worth it. Well. I'd say maybe put in a buy order for $19,000, $19,999. I'm not selling my Mal Ott. No way. Uh-uh. He is a gladiator for as long as I can keep him. So his batting stats this year, he is hitting a career high, 286 so far. He won't keep that up. He's not that type of player, uh, but he has... One home run, four RBIs, eight hits. So happy with how he's doing so far. And he can play in the field as well. His batting stats or his fielding stats haven't really hurt us except one year in silver. But he had a 13.0 ZR uh, just a couple seasons ago. So he's a good right fielder. All right, other than that, guys, again, no use going over the stats too much. Our weakness, Nolan Arian and Arenado at third base. Again, his fielding stats are kind of what keeps him on the team. He's a really good fielder. And uh, other than that, we'll let it play out a little bit more and see how these guys do. Hopefully we can get a few more packs in the tourneys. And uh, what you feeling on a Monday? You feeling like bringing me a diamond? What do you say? Great catcher at bronze. We used him last season. No silvers, two bronze players, couple historicals. Yesterday we started with a live diamond. I'm thinking we're gonna get a historical diamond this time. Let's go. Six more packs. Here's a gold. Hey, I'll take it. Thank you, guys. We have a gold. Even better if it's historical. No, it's Justin Verlander who dropped five from last month. Okay, that's a thousand perfect points. We'll probably quick sell him. Sloppy Thurston as a historical bronze. And nothing much there. Three bronze in that pack. Silver historical. I like it. Let's check Ken Holloway out and uh, see what he is selling for. So about 450 is what someone's willing to buy him for. So that's another really good pull. I'll probably use him for my missions though. One more pack, guys, just a short opening pack today, and let's call for a 67 historical bronze as the high card. Hope I'm wrong. Oh, that's another gold. Here we go. And a Negro League player, Harry Williams, and this time it is a historical. So even though we didn't open many packs today, we are going to give that 
a blow of the air horn. Thank you, OOTP, for ending off this short pack pull with a quality player. What is he selling for in the card shop? $1,500. Very good. I'll take it. So Larry Sorensen, not going to make our team. We have much better pitchers than this. But again, in the missions, could be a useful player. Let's take a quick look at our missions. Any new ones completed here? Just one. Troy Tulowitzki. We have completed this one. 28. No, we haven't completed it. Show's completed. We need to select that one there. Should be good to go. Let's lock it in and get that shortstop. And we're close on a few others as well. Okay, some really good players coming up that we could probably use in our lineup. Which red Faber is this? Diamond, yeah. I'm thinking he could make our team. Kind of looks like Mel Ott a little bit, doesn't he? Maybe they were brothers in a previous life. All right, let's submit this team. We're good to go there. And guys, that's going to be it for this one here. I'm not going to upload it yet. I'm going to do another addition to this video tomorrow just to kind of show you where we are after a couple days of Sims. So for you, it will be mere moments. For me, it'll be 24 hours. So we'll see you in uh, just a few seconds, I guess. I'm back again just for a quick little interlude here. It is Monday night and just checking in on our gladiators. And I noticed that I put in a buy order on a certain Hank Aaron. And I put in a buy order of 55,000. And right now, the lowest one is going for 60,000. And lo and behold, Mr. Hank Aaron is a Rocky Mountain Gladiator. There he is. He is part of the team. We're going to activate him. Of course, I've got to deactivate someone else that we're not using. There we go. And activate. He is activated. He is going to be on the team very shortly of course we can use him as a right fielder or as a dh or anywhere really in the outfield or first base so he will be part of our team right away and we'll see tomorrow how he does in his first few sims as a gladiator you know, I, I hope you guys are okay with me making that move. You know, you guys are the, you know, the fans of the team, and I want to make sure that I invest wisely in our players. But through the bronze and the silver leagues, I noticed Hank Aaron always seems to perform well, so I'm hoping he can perform well in gold as well. And I think we are going to have to say goodbye to Billy Hamilton in the outfield even though he is a great base dealer he is going to be replaced by Hank Aaron Billy Hamilton was hitting a 136 and he ain't no Mel Ott Mel Ott gets the benefit of the doubt because he can recover Billy Hamilton has to go at least for now and Hank Aaron will take his place we will find a place for Hank Aaron in the lineup but I just wanted to pop in and record this little section of our new gladiator. Welcome, Hank. And once again, popping in because we can do that in YouTube land. Hank Aaron has played his first game with the gladiators. And I wanted to show you guys the game log. I haven't checked it out. The game has just simmed. We have him in the lineup, and I think we have him leading off. Yes, we do. So Hank Aaron, 
leads off the first with a double, and he comes around to score the first run in his first game and first at bat for the Gladiators. Well done, Hank. Welcome to the team. Let's take a look at his next at bat. In the third inning, Hank Aaron grounds out, so he's one for two. Moving down to the fifth inning. No, how about the sixth inning? Here he is in the sixth inning. Hank Aaron flies out, so he goes one for three, and he should have one more at bat at least. Here he is in the top of the eighth. Hank Aaron singles with one out, moves to second after Jimmy Fox is hit with a pitch. Jim Gentile singles, which drives in Hank Aaron from third. So Hank Aaron scores both runs for the Rocky Mountain Gladiators, and they would go on to win the game 2-0. What an impressive debut for the new Gladiator. He was expensive, 55,000 points, but I think that that is going to pay off with some accomplishments for Mr. Hank Aaron. So he finishes the day going two for four, two hits, two runs, batting 500 after his first game. He's not the player of the game, of course, because that's going to go to Kurt Schilling, who started the game and went seven strong innings. Thought I'd show you guys our team, the Gladiators, Hank Aaron, first game. Is he a threat to the face of the franchise, Mel Ott? Well, maybe, maybe. But for now, we know it's still Mel. We'll catch you guys again Tuesday morning. We are back to finish off the episode. And a long episode it was. Thank you guys for tuning in and watching it all the way through. And let's see how our team is doing on this Tuesday, early afternoon. All right, let's check out the standings. And look at that, the Gladiators are 18 and 12. We'll take that, won't we? Yes, we will. Our first year in gold, and we are second in our division. In terms of the wild card, we are the number one wild card team with a game and a half lead in the wild card race. The overall kind of basic stats here, no one in the player stats. A few Hank Aarons, but not ours, but we picked ours up a little bit late, so that's understandable. In terms of the team stats, we have the number one starter ERA. Kind of a surprise. Cool. And the number one in terms of runs against. I will take that as well. And in terms of the hitters, we are third in on-base percentage. So we're holding our own in gold so far. Good to see. Let's take a look at our players and see how they're doing. Pitching-wise, all of our pitchers are above 500. I will take that. Doing really well in the starting pitching department and in the relieving department, other than maybe Roy Face, who's a little bit of a disappointment, no saves yet as our kind of our number one closer. Steve Bedrosian doing well. Picked him up recently. Dave LaRoche, again, still continuing on his pace as our reliever of the year the last two seasons. And our number five guy, Kurt Schilling, is 3-0 and currently. So he may move up into the rotation, but right now he's having success where he is. All right, let's take a look at our hitters. Who, who's going to be our top guy? Who's our top hitter going to be? We rank by war. Look at that. We got a couple guys who have reached one in war. Hank Aaron, who we picked up recently. Jim Gentile, we picked up recently. And a new addition, Fred Carroll, who is platooning at catching. Uh, he is third in war. So three guys that we picked up in the last week are making positive contributions to the team 
And then, of course, of all the older players, Mel Ott and Lloyd Mosby are next in line. Way to go, guys. Yeah, good to see you've got some support now. Jim Gentile, look at that. Got hits in four of his last five games, hitting 300 as our platoon first baseman with uh, Jim Fox and Hank Aaron, who has now played in 13 games, has a pretty good hit run going, hit in four of his last five games and multiple hits in four of his last five games, including three home runs, and he's hitting 367. Positive contribution. Maybe a little controversy about picking up Hank Aaron off the card shop for 55000 He is a mission player, but I'm still a long way away from finishing that mission. So I figured buy him now. I can always sell him when I get him through the missions and get back at least half of the perfect points that I spent. Negative war, JJ Hardy, again, who I expect to be a negative war He's not going to be a hitter. He's only hitting 0-4-3. That is one of the awful stats I've seen in the last couple seasons. That's horrible hitting-wise. But again, he's not our starter anymore. So he's more of a platoon role. And fielding, he still has a positive ZR. So he's going to be kind of our backup shortstop. As we got Nomar, we got Nolan, we got Louis, we got all these guys, and Joe Sewell, who's kind of our main guy now. Let's take a look at him. He's only hitting 216. Hopefully his ZR is really good. Uh, it's a negative ZR. So he may be a guy that comes out and we put JJ back in. Because if we're going to have a bad hitter, we might as well have a good fielder. So we'll, we'll watch it, and the next episode, we'll see if we need to make that change. 28 packs. I'm not going to open any. And if you have any packs stored up, hold on to them. Hang on to them for a couple more days, because apparently Thursday, OOTP is going to release a bunch of new cards. So save your packs, and hopefully you'll open up some of these new players when they release them Thursday. I believe... Thursday evening is when they do their show and so by late Thursday evening or early Friday they'll definitely be in packs so I have 28 I'm not going to open any to end the episode we'll hang on to them until the next episode so that's going to do it guys a quick look at the overall uh, stats for players we have Jimmy Fox and Hank Greenberg leading the league in home runs we have Jimmy Fox and Hank Aaron both players we have, but we don't have these two. And in terms of our pitching leaders, we have Kazmir with six wins, R.A. Dickey with a few other players leading in war, and Zach Britton, Bobby Jenks, Rob Nen, Kurt Schilling, and Carl Willis, all with eight saves. And R.A. Dickey and Mark Pryor, not ours, with 47 strikeouts for the year. So we're doing really well. Thank you guys again for tuning in. It is a great day for baseball, especially in gold, especially since we're doing well. Thank you guys for bringing all the pack luck and all the comments to the channel. Please leave a comment. If you haven't subscribed, click that button. Come on, what are you waiting for? We'll see you guys in the next episode.